Happy Halloween, everybody! Although this episode that was released on the week of Halloween didn't feel very much like Halloween. But it still was a good episode, despite the fact that we're starting a whole new arc and familiar characters are now back to life. Aloha! Welcome to Cinelina Reviews, and tonight we will be reviewing episode 5 of Higurashi When They Cry 2020. Now, as I mentioned before, we're starting a whole new arc, and everybody is alive, and we're just going to kind of go to the point where those that have never been familiar with Higurashi, they're questioning what the hell is going on, and I will explain. This episode will be in a style of a podcast, so if you want to minimize my videos while listening to me while doing something else, that is totally fine. I won't be offended. Be forewarned that a spoiler alert is now in effect. The date is June 12, 1983. See how previously we were on June 23rd? Kiji wakes up and he gets a phone call from Mion and Rena. And they were talking about going to this game tournament downtown. And I really like this episode. This episode was pretty fun. It was very light. It was enjoyable. And Kiji is playing with two of the students who go to the same school that he is. They're playing the board game called The Game of Life. Then that's actually one of my favorite board games is The Game of Life. I'm I'm just like laughing the entirety of this episode and the scene where Kiji is just losing hard and Rena, she's playing this game where the reader would read something and she would snatch the card. I don't know exactly what that game is called. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments below. And she's just, every time she picks up the card, she's just like, oh my god, it's so cute! I want to take it home! Kichi looks over and every single one of the cards on it, they're just like cute animals and objects and stuff. And it's like, okay, well that kind of makes sense why she wants to take everything home. They're all cute. So at the end of the tournament, everybody wins, and they all win stuffed animals, and Kiji gets this doll. And he appreciates that he has the doll, but he decides to give it to Mion, where, in a way, he's like, well, I know you'll give it a better home than I will, and I know you'll take care of it than I will. June 13th comes along. Kiji goes into the restaurant with his father, and the waitresses have a very, um, risque waitress outfit. Um, you don't really expect waitresses to wear outfits such as that, but in the world of Higurashi in 1983, we're going to go ahead and do so. Keiichi's father leaves for a couple of minutes, and this is where we meet, at first we thought, Mion, but really, it's Mion's twin, Shion. And, you know, Keiichi being Keiichi, just saying that she's really nice, she's better looking than Mion, she's... Not, she's a lot nicer than Mion, so on and so forth. And, and Shion just takes it with such flattery that this boy that she just met, yet she heard about him from her twin sister, is saying all these nice things about her. So it's just kind of like a cute little episode of those two knowing each other. But for those that have previously seen the original series, Kichi says, well, it's probably Mion acting this way. He believes that it's Mion pulling it act rather than it being Shion, the twin. And the same evening, Kichi returns home and <laughs> the typical boy that he is, he's like, I'm starving. <laughs> When's mom coming home? And on cue, a knock is coming from his front door and he tells the person that it's open. Walking inside is Shion with piles of food like how we saw Rena with all those bento boxes piled on together. We see Shion that same thing with the pile of bento boxes together and she says, well I want to thank you for the doll that you gave me. Kichi is very confused on what she's talking about and Shion comes in and explains, well the doll that you gave my sister Mion, she gave it to me so I just want to thank you for it. And of course Kichi being nice about it, he lets Shion come into the house and just kind of prep food for him. And at first he's like, oh, I don't know, what if she poisoned it? Or what if she poured in too much Tabas Tabasco sauce? And really, the next day comes and he's fine. There's nothing wrong with the food. It was delicious. It was wonderful. 
He returns to Mion with the empty bento boxes and, or containers, and he says to Mion, Hey, can you tell your sister I said thanks for the food? I even cleaned the containers and the bento boxes for her. And it's common courtesy where if somebody gives you, like, a container of food, and if the container is not something to throw away, you would wash it and make sure it's clean, and you would give it back to the original person with your own set of food in, in the container. I don't know if it's common for everybody, but I know it's common from my family, and I, I it's, it's a nice gesture to give out. Mion becomes very flustered about Shion every time Kiichi speaks up about it, and she gets called on by the teacher to go up up front, and while Mion is talking to the teacher, Kiichi and Rena are just kind of whispering to each other, and in a nutshell, Rena is saying, you can't judge a book by the cover, and which is very, very true. At the very last bit of the episode, we're on June 15th, and it's the end of the school day, Rika says that she has to prepare for the festival. Kichi wasn't sure on what festival she was talking about. This is where Mion, Rena, Satoko, Rika, they're all explaining to him about the Cotton Drifting Festival, which was the same festival where all these incidents occurred right after, and it's to praise Oyashiro. Stopping by the restaurant where Shion works, Kiichi decides that he wanted to go in and visit. He accidentally knocks over these motorcycle bikes and a group of like 15, 16 teenagers, these kids that are of course older than Kiichi, they come in and they're ready to threaten him that he better pay for the damage of the bikes or else. This is where Shion comes out and she just gives this death glare to these students. And what's kind of creepy is that new to this series, I don't recall this happening in the previous series, where not only is Shion just giving like a death glare to the kids, but also bystanders around them. So random civilians that are standing in the area, they're all walking with that same death glare as well. And that was just really freaky. Kiichi's obviously freaked out about this. We as the viewers are obviously freaked out about this and what's going on. It's like she has everybody in some kind of spell to where this is going to happen. She's feeling this. She's given a threatening death glare to them. Now bystanders are going to be feeling this exact same way as well. So these ki so the older teenagers are obviously outnumbered. What's going to happen? We won't know until next week's episode. So that is the end of episode 5 of Higurashi When They Cry. I like this episode. I really like how lighthearted this is. And like I said in the previous arc, this is probably going to be the last bit of lightheartedness that we get before we start going downhill where there's so much creep factor, there's so much gore factor, and where here comes the psychological explanations again. So I really like this. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next with Mion and Shion. Um, for those that are kind of new to the series and they don't understand why Rena is still alive and everybody's all fine and dandy afterwards, I explained this in episode 2, is that we have this being called Hanyu. And Hanyu is the one responsible for going back in time for the summer drifting event. So... After the events occurred of Oyashiro, one is spirited away, one has died, then we're going backwards in time. So this is kind of like a reverse. It's kind of like a, um, I can't think of what the movie's called, but it's kind of like you die and then you wake up and then you're repeating everything over again. I know there's a couple of films like that, I just can't pull one on the top of my head. But we're kind of being pulled in the same route, except when you die, you have Hanyu going back in time and you're reliving the events over and over again. So I hope we are able to know a little bit more about Hanyu later into the future. I've never met her before, so she's a brand new character to me and, and I just want to learn a little bit more about her and why she's doing this. So there's obviously a reason, whether it's by choice or whether it's by force, I, I would like to know. 
So that is the end of Higurashi When They Cry 2020 Episode 5. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and taking a listen at my review. What do you guys think about this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Like this video. Subscribe to Stimulator Reviews. Help me make it grow. I want to see something come out of this. If you want to be notified for personal videos or all my videos, make sure you click on that bell down below and go to my Twitter page where I currently have a poll coming. I am almost close to my 100 subscribers. And the vote all depends on you guys on what we'll be doing. So check out that poll. Help me reach 100 so we can do that 100 subscriber special. Thank you guys so much and we will see you guys on another day. Our simplest prevention is our biggest protection. Take care of yourselves and others as you practice social distancing, washing hands, and staying at home. Let's get better by starting to make our world better to reduce the spread of COVID-19. See you later on another day!